Okay, so I think we are live. Uh, this is being recorded now so that we can put it up on the uh, resources vault. So welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome everyone to this live webinar and then also welcome back if you're watching this uh, rewind later in the resources vault. I'm excited today to um, present our fourth and final part of this four part series on getting our meditation classes online. So uh, good to see all you troopers in here hanging to the end. And uh, as I explained, we've got a uh, special present for you guys uh, in the form of extra coaching, which we want to sort of give to the people that have really stayed at it. So thank you very much. And now I'm going to just start off a little bit and then I'll hand over to Mana. Um, and I have to bear with me, present my screen. Uh, all right, and so just an introduction uh, again to, to this workshop. Uh, the reason we're all meeting mainly is because the world is in a crisis. All our worlds have been turned upside down by this uh, coronavirus crisis that's going on at the moment. But I think more than ever, we can use meditation to help restore the balance and create some additional income for ourselves. So this is what we're trying to achieve in this. And I gave some thought about it today. And you know what? I came up with the decision that in a way, there's no better time. I think most of you, and I've talked to many of our leaders, and many of them are of the same sort of mindset of, of, uh, as myself, that the world goes through these, um, you know, ups and downs, just as we do in life. And after we have a difficult period in our own life, then we often reflect on what is important in our life. And so I think the world is going through a bit of a reset. Now, you know, some people will put it down to sort of divine intervention or whatever, or maybe it is just luck. But irrespective of how you believe this turmoil came about, um, I think that when the world goes through a difficult period like this, then it does cause people time to uh, look inside themselves and see what's going on. Uh, rather than just our day-to-day -day life, which is chasing the dollars and chasing what, whatever we have to do in life. And so at the moment, people are stuck at home, often feeling stressed, and they're turning to uh, online in droves. Now, a lot of them are just going to Netflix and uh, places like that, but there are also people wanting to do spirit, you know, some sort of self-development, and so they are looking for meditation. And so in a way, this is really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us to reach out and actually scale up our online following. So, uh, we should really maximize this opportunity. Now, uh, we're going to go through how to market oneself online. And I must profess, I like to think of myself as fairly knowledgeable in the area of meditation, but I, uh, you know, I acknowledge my shortcomings in the area of also online marketing. So I know a little bit, but I'm definitely not the expert and I'll be handing you over to the experts in a moment. But the one thing that I do want to say is that the people who are um, successful are passionate and are out there and are continually out there and they're putting content out all the time. And so I'm sure that uh, Andy will cover this, but we need to be putting content out. Now, what content? We'll talk about that later. But we need to push it out daily. And there's a couple of things you can do. The one thing that um, I should do more of, uh, I know, but I, I try to do a bit of is the Facebook Lives. And honestly, if you get over the nerves, it really is easy. So 
Um, often inspiration comes to me in my personal med meditation. And so that often gives me inspiration to talk. Sometimes I'll set it up like here on the backdrop. Sometimes I'll just go for a walk and I'll uh, literally walk along talking into my phone. And yeah, you only get, uh, you know, two or three people looking, but over the course of the week, often that'll, um, you know, there'll be quite a lot more. And if you can keep that continuous, you will see your following grow. So I'm not going to explain about really how to do a Facebook Live because it really is quite easy. You go to your personal, personal page, you click on the little options down below and it'll give you a menu and one of them says do live. You press the button and away you go. So you ask us if you really have trouble, but it really is quite simple. The other thing is to go into groups uh, that are to do with meditation and look at what people are asking and offer simple um, answers to people's questions. And what will happen is when they see a helpful person, they'll naturally want to check you out. So they'll come back to your page. Now, here's the important thing. You have to push out a lot of content in order to cut through because there is so much content out there. But more importantly, point number two, if we work as a team together, you know, there's a saying that, you know, in a high tide, all ships rise. And so if we work together as a team and we're all pushing content out and we all funnel that activity back to our online calendar, uh, then we will, uh, you know, get um, more activity happening for us, but also for all of our leaders and they will help us get activity. And teams will always come out on top. If you've got several people working synergistically, they'll always beat one person uh, you know, working by themselves. In fact, there's a quote I like by Zig Ziglar who says, if you help enough people get what you, they want in life, then you will definitely get what you want in life. It will return to you. So that's why we're teaching you how to do this. And my push, I guess, is to uh, use our online class calendar uh, as, as, a, as a central point where we push traffic to and then from there they go out to the online classes. So um, I think my calendar's here. Here it is. It's still a lot uh, more empty than what I would like. So please, we're going to be pushing you, if you can, uh, put your classes up here and we will be um, adding more and more to them. Um, I'm not sure if we can make this calendar a little bit more pretty. We might have a look at that, I'm not sure. But in any case, uh, this calendar bit will be it, so please do that. All right, so I'm going to stop the share now. And I am going to hand over to Mana. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pete. And hello, everyone. How are you today? Good? Very good, yep. Very good. I'll, good. Mute, I'll mute myself, sorry. Oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> good to see everyone today. And how did you go so far with your Zoom, even bright, and your calendars? How did you go so far? I can see some of you were contacting me, and I hope I could be of some help to each one of you. So are you okay so far? Are you ready? All right, okay. Yes, I'll quickly share my screen, and let's see, because I think... For every entrepreneur, you are an entrepreneur in your own space and I'm here to just talk about the few challenges of an entrepreneur and how you can overcome them. That would be my topic today. And uh, just let's see, maybe you can start putting in your chat box. If I say, as an entrepreneur, as you're starting up, what are your key fears? What, are you, what do you think are your challenges? I'd be happy if you can just start putting them in the chat box there. I would like to know, what are your challenges? Well, one word for your challenge, what were they? I'm just following your chat, getting there, yeah? So, okay, yeah, yeah. Technology, confidence, going online, keep coming, yeah? What else? Building a following, great, yep. But no one here. Yep, they're all fears taking the plunge here. Yeah. Any more? That's it. Okay. 
anyone one more challenge anybody all right okay great okay i can see that so if it is a word of assurance for you you're normal <laughs> and you're absolutely perfect and you're normal so you're all right and that's common i didn't see anybody abnormal in your challenges because that's the journey of every entrepreneur i've been a business advisor and they're the very normal normal challenges and if you don't feel that that means you're not an entrepreneur because you can be in your comfort zone and you're not be here all right i'll quickly share my screen and let's see how we go line so i'll quickly take you through what's this what are the strategies that every solopreneur or someone who's starting their business they generally think about and what are the natural challenges that comes in during the process and how do you kind of flip them and take it to your own advantage so the very first thing that i say for all the clients and for all my clients so far um, in the business is about thinking about collaboration in, and the landscape has changed all of a sudden and you are uh, all of a sudden learning about zoom getting online and you have different challenges which you are not aware of earlier so collaborate the reason why we talk about collaboration right in right at the beginning more than mindset is about getting into that space where you'll understand what is what are your strengths and what are the others strengths and how you can collaborate and deliver something together it can be maybe taking a subscription for a corporation or saying uh, you will go and deliver some classes and every organization every hospital every school they have different challenges someone want someone who specializing in mindfulness for men or mindfulness for women or stress related anxiety or stress or anxiety or work from home at the moment so how to set boundaries so think about how you can collaborate what are the opportunities out there and this is a beautiful story where you have this amazing feast right at the center of the table and the only condition is you can't and there's a long spoon that is given to you so you should eat with the long spoon and one of the wise guys around the table comes up with this thought that how can i why not i feed my neighbor with this long spoon and that way everyone gets fed i think this is a right story for this right situation where think about how you can help others and they'll help you in the process and you can do something together the next thing is about connect connect and connect this is a story about a woman whom i was talking to two days ago and she she's brilliant with one the way she approached things she was a person who is she's running a business to deliver food and all of a sudden there is no physical contact there is no personal contact otherwise you're networking going to the events and talking to them but what's the first thing that you do when the situations have changed and you can't meet them again in the more in person so what she did is she went back to that older version that old model of talking to people which is telephone but what she did brilliantly is she took all the contacts in her list and she called them personally she took a week to just call them personally and say yes we cannot meet in person but i would want you to know that i can still take telephone orders and then deliver food so meanwhile in one week's time she got her website ready where people can place orders online and she equipped herself with zoom so she can keep in touch and still maintain those relationships so think about how you can connect connect to the people around connect to your clients current current list of uh, people who are attending your classes connect and see it is a brilliant way and a strategy to just stay that way and then um, the more i think the most important thing that happens with connections are it's not only connecting to the people in your current list but also to your peers and to your leaders and once you collaborate then it's only a matter of referrals and then the moment you connect with them they will come to your classes and the third area we talk about is challenges you all are into mindfulness and meditation so you do know that mind how mind works and you do know the challenges that you are facing now of fear maybe fear of lack or self doubt or fear that you will not make enough money or the fear that you are not very really comfortable with the technology or the fear that whether people would come to my workshops or sessions 
but they are all just fears. But as a mindful mindfulness practitioner, you know, just be aware of those challenges and befriend those challenges and collaborate and connect and that will take you a long way. So if nothing, I would want you to take this statement away with you. The right product to the right customer at the right time for the right price in the right manner through the right distribution channel. If nothing, if you can just focus on these three lines and see what is your right product? What's your product? And who is your right customer or a right audience? Right time, because this is the right time, because mental health and mindfulness is needed now more than ever. For the right price, how do you know your right price? Just look at your competitors, look at others, what are they charging? What sort of model they're working on? In the right manner, which is online, brilliant through the right distribution channel. So what is the right distribution channel in your case? It can be social media, or it can be people on your phone list, or it can be people in your email database. So find out what platform works well for you. And if you can address every right thing in this sentence, you're 75% there ready to go ahead with your business. And a day in the life as an entrepreneur, it's very natural. One day you would say, I'm excited. Another day you would say, I think I'm going bankrupt. And one day you will feel absolutely fine. And that's how an entrepreneur's day looks like. And it's quite natural and normal to feel that way. Then we'll talk about strategy. So this is the most important aspect for any solopreneur or someone who's starting on their own. What do you really want? Focus on what do you want? Focus on your personal strategy. What do you really want? And what is your why? Why do you want to do this? Why are you in it? Some, for some money is a driver. For some helping is a driver. For some family may be a driver. So what is your why? So anytime you are in doubt, anytime you feel you're not doing well, you know that this is your why and you're passionate about it. Think about it. And so for some money is a driver and probably you're trying to run, make your business and passion as one. So how much do you want to earn? Think about it. Because what you, what you don't measure, you'll always lose sight of it. You can't track it. So how much do you want to earn? Is it just a side hustle? Or do you want to make a living out of it? Or is this your passion and you want to inspire others by proving that mindfulness and meditation can help you to sustain and will make a living for you? Lifestyle choices, what sort of lifestyle do you want to achieve or what do you have and what are the changes you want to make? Think about it as a family, think about it individual and also as a family level and also with your kids. Family and personal values, what are your values? What do you want from this, uh, whether running classes online or you call it a business? And are your, is your family aligned to what you're doing? The reason why this is so important, I see, in the process of uh, working with the clients is you may be so passionate about it but sometimes if your family may not be supporting it or your kids are not supporting it and that becomes a challenge in the journey so just it's better to think about it and just be aware of it and as i said befriend your challenges other services you all have enormous life experiences and you must be working in different fields so think about what other services that you can deliver along with your meditation classes or mindfulness classes. What are the other services that you can deliver online? Maybe a thought process, just, just a simple thinking as a nurse or saying, or say, for example, maybe you're a teacher and you think this is something I can deliver to my students or to the school. So think about what other services you can deliver besides meditation and see if you can package it as your program. And that, that will, that's the definite revenue stream for you if you would like to consider that. Once you think about what can you deliver, what are your family and your values, and what do you really want, what are your lifestyle choices, once you make those choices, and once you get a number, that whether it's money or number of people that you want to help or number of classes you want to run in a year, once you have those measurement matrices around, then you move on to thinking, how do I make this happen? And for you to think about that, what is generally important is to ensure you have consistent revenue. Why consistent revenue? You can run behind 
one client every week for $10 a class, or you can think big and see, can I run, it, run this model as a subscription model? Or can I sell my, my passes for class passes saying, say for example, for six months, whatever is a subscription amount. Can you do that? So you have a commitment and you have a revenue stream coming in and think about how many clients times the money will can keep you going or how many classes and how many clients do you want or how many participants do you want think about that then if you want to make your passion your business then think about how you can make revenue consistent how can you, what are the what are the ways that you can do that and what sort of revenue streams are available for someone like you in this business you can make cds with your meditation and plus any other services you have got you can get videos upload onto youtube and advertisement is a big revenue think if you can get an app done with your meditation for a specific niche for your niche for your target audience and see if you can sell it if thousand people per month buys it for one dollar you still make decent money books you all will have enormous stories and the reason why you are in this into meditation is because of your passion because of your why can you convert into a book can you convert into a kind of a small video think about it subscription model this is the best that works in this scenario see how you can get people to subscribe to your model create your group on social media create a group on website and create the subscription model where they subscribe either six months or one year because mindset mindfulness and meditation they're just like cleaning your home you need to do that every day everybody needs that so there is a need so you're not pushing you're offering your service you can come to grants what is the other uh, mode that you can fund your passion is through grants just day before yesterday australian government has issued 1.1 billion dollars package for people who are helping with mental health telehealth is the buzz so you can actually talk to people and then that is applied on your medicare cards so you get paid for that and it's a telehealth, it's a new model. You can just talk to them. So now you know how to operate Zoom, you have telephone, you can reach out to your clients. And maybe you can take some short-term courses which are recognized by the government and which can go down to the Medicare. So you can offer your mindfulness, meditation, and that service, your whatever is approved through telehealth. And you can apply for grants as a solopreneur and especially women. There are a lot of initiatives now funded by the government for women on this and the, where do you find all these avenues number one your contact list you all have friends you all have your families so go through your contact list and see who who is it that you can approach who can influence someone so go and ask them how they can help you they may be a teacher there may be the, she may be one of your friends is a nurse or a teacher or running a business or a small business owner or another mindfulness teacher but you can ask them and just run through your contact list and see what opportunities are available in your own contact list you'll be surprised when you start thinking how can they help me just ask yourself how can this person help me and your mind will give you the answers and next is about partnerships. If you look at the very big picture, every organization is partnering with some sort of organization and you're with skillful mind. Probably in your own circles or in your own network, in your LinkedIn or Facebook network, you may find someone who's running a business and they may be wanting to partner with your business for their employees or in hospitals, that's the most, uh, what do you say, that's the place where you really need or you can offer help to the people who are working in the service sector, aged care sector, the carers, that's a big niche area there. Schools for children, for teachers and for parents. So community centers, organizations, these are all the places where you can keep your ears and eyes open to see the opportunities and see if you can collaborate, connect, face your challenges, befriend them, approach them and see if you can actually get into partnerships with these people and see if you can actually run your business as a subscription model so think big and just not focusing on one person at a time and then moving on you created your future this is the future you wanted to create and you have embarked on this journey so just embrace it finally life is an experiment have fun and just be you as andy said in the last workshop be unashamedly you
you have a story and you can do it. And if you need any help, we are here to support you. And if you have any questions, keep dropping in the chat box and we'll let respond to them. I will hand over now off, uh, to uh, Andy. And if your slides aren't working, I will double check to make sure they are. Can you let me know. Oh, Andy. <laughs> Thank you. So how are we all? Yeah. Are we all feeling a bit, you know, there's, there's a lot of information that's gone on yeah. over this last week. I think, was it last Saturday we started? Is that right? Yes, I think it was, wasn't it? It's our full yeah. week. There's an awful lot of stuff that's gone on and you've had to learn and try and implement within that week. But congratulations, like Mana said, congratulations. You've made it. You've made it to the final session and you're about to, we've, we've taken you on a journey and you're about to get to the part where, you know, you've got all the skills, you, you know what you're doing now. Now it's about scaling the business for you. So again, please tell me, you feel free to unmute yourself if my slides don't work. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, you, you're all looking beautifully lit today. So that's fantastic. Really good to see. And uh, all looking nice within the camera. I can see some really, really nice looking shots there. So, so that's really pleasing to see. All right, just let me share my screen. All right, can you all see my screen? Yes, no, but please, please let me know. Great. So like I said, we are looking, we are now really at that, that final stage. And what we're gonna look at now is how to message and market your business. And again, we'll keep it as simple as we can. And for you, it's about keeping it also as cost effective as you can. The things that you can really do yourself that will give you the best opportunity to, to, to expand your reach. All right, so we're really gonna to look today just at, at the messaging of your business. So what do I mean by messaging? It's about, often when people talk about messaging, it's like you know, Pete said a little bit earlier, Mana mentioned in her talk as well. It's about looking at who you are and what message you can put out to the world that's authentic and is unashamedly you but i just want to talk something and, and i know we talked about it with with peter manor earlier um however i'm not sure we kind of really got into this or maybe i just missed that part but what we're looking at doing uh, is now what pete's looking at doing is is as part of your uh, your profile on skillful mind is putting a promo video together just a one minute video that sort of says to the world who you are, you know, what you do, and what you specialize in. And it really should be different for every single one of you. As Mana mentioned earlier, what's, your, what's the difference that you can bring? What's your speciality? Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, it, it's calmness, it's peace. But whatever it is for you, it's about bringing that. So when we talk about this, this simple promo video that people will be able to connect with you before they join your meditation class. And that's really important because if, if all they see is, a, is an image, it doesn't connect the same as looking at you and, and connecting with you. Just like if you couldn't see me now in the corner and all you saw was a screen, you wouldn't know who I was. But yet just quickly, a quick brief, like I said, one minute, I could go onto the screen, you won't see me again, but however you'd have felt there's a connection there. So this is what we're trying to do. So the idea is, and we'll, um, I think we'll get Sarah to, to bring out a couple of slides later on, I'll send you an email later on with just a couple of strategies of what we can do. However, it's gonna go something like, so straight off, you give your name. So, hey, my name's Andrew Keating. And then if you all say the same line, I think this would be really good. So hi, my name's, my name's Andrew Keating. I'm a skillful mind medita meditation leader. And if you start with that, that would be great. And you might, so you might wanna say where you come from as well, if you feel, uh, feel so uh, that way inclined. But then you can, I want you to think about what you specialize in. And we're gonna go into this a little bit, so don't worry too much if you've not, you've not got an idea. So what you might go say something like, so 
um, I, I specialize in stress reduction for nurse, for the nursing and self-care community. If this sounds like something that you would like, come along and join me in my meditation class. 30 seconds, one minute, that's all it needs to be. But we'll give you a structure and we'll send you a structure out of what that can be for you. So let's talk a little bit about USP. So your USP is your unique selling proposition or unique selling position. So we've got to look at what that is for you. And we've all got that. We've all got one because we've all got our own story. And it's about digging into your story to find out about you that will help us develop what it is for you. So and what potentially the, the, uh, be, before you were a meditation leader, or even now it, this might be something you do on the side, what is your role? How can you bring that and how can you make your role, um, well, sorry, how can you niche into your role? So think about this for yourself. Who are you and what's your story? So, for example, like I said, you may be a nurse. Do you think that if you are a nurse, you will get alongside other nurses easier? You would, right? And people will go, I want somebody like that. She knows what I'm going through. She knows what I'm going through, or he knows what I'm going through. That's the person for me. So who are you? What's your story? So for me, for example, when I'm talking to uh, a group, say if, if I'm talking in ethical sales, what I would talk about is I talk about my story. I talk about where I came from and how and what my journey was to get to where I am right now and what lessons I've learned on the way that helped me be the best at what I do. The next thing I want you to look at is who's your audience? So again, when I'm talking about your audience, it's, it's so important that we niche down. It's, it's, the, the problem is half the times what we want to think is, I want to spread out to the world and everybody is my audience. Why am I going to limit it by, by somebody? But the problem is you can't really hit a mark. You can't hit somebody here by trying to appeal to everybody. If you, are in a, in a, uh, if you were a business executive, would it not be wise to say, okay, I know what a business executive goes through. So if I know what they go through, I can market to business executives and have them, you know, say, that's me. I'm just like that. If he can do it or if she can do it, so can I. And that's what we want to get. We don't want someone to go, that's right, when, when they hear something. We want to go, yeah, you're right. I want it. And so when you're talking about going wide, I'd actually say go narrow, 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 as narrow as you can. Find your niche, find your niche, find your niche. And again, we can help you with this. But once you've found it, you've found your tribe, you've found your connection, and people will flock to that because it feels right. And you can I jump in here and also mm. share with you what you said to me earlier today, which just resonated so well. When we get the calendar up and we've got meditation with Andy, meditation with Joanne, meditation with Cindy, meditation with Greg, um, you know, people are going to look at that calendar and go, well, how do I choose or where do I go? You know, but if we've got meditation for executives, meditation for teachers, meditation to relax, meditation to cope with stress around COVID, meditation around something else, then it's going to create a lot more interest and you'll get people that are in your tribe, so to speak, as Andy was talking about, coming to your meditation and it'll stand out of the calendar and it'll make the calendar itself much more interesting to people. So, um, so sorry to jump in there, but I, I thought 
pulling it back. Oh. It, it, yeah. Mm. Okay, so, so yeah, absolutely. And just think for a moment, imagine you're a CEO of a company and what you see, you know, you, you're stressed, you can't sleep. And what you see when you're looking, you're, I'm looking online for something that's gonna help with this. And you look online and you see uh, strategies for stress reduction in CEOs. Would that stand out to you rather than meditation classes? Of course, right? Because it's speaking to you. So like I said, it, it, often what happens is we want to spread the net wide. But what we find time and time again is the more that we laser focus on a niche, the more that we, we can speak and market to that person. But also, if you decide you're going to do any kind of Facebook advertising yourself, then it will ask you for certain groups. And if you niche to that group, you'd be able to message to a specific demographic, a specific interest type, a specific job title, and your messaging, your messaging becomes so much more potent. Does that make sense? So like it says here, if you try appeal to everybody, you'll appeal to nobody. So if I can leave you with one thing, it would be, it'd be niche, niche, niche. By doing that, you're building authority. So I'm the authority for CEOs in Australia and the United Kingdom. That's where you're building authority. I specialize in, or I help, rather than saying something, uh, what most people would say, which is, can I have, uh, sorry, um, you know, if you want to come to meditation, if you want to relax, if you're not sleeping, then come along to my class. And I say, my name's Andrew Keaton. I help CEOs with stress management and tools to relax within 24 hours. Is that a better message? Would you agree that's a better message? Yes or no? Yeah. It's speaking to people. It's speaking to who they are. Now, you all have your own journey. As I said, you all can find your own niche, build your authority. That's what we need to do. Now, the other, the other reason I've got this slide on, as Pete mentioned earlier, one of the ways to build authority is to go into, once you've found your niche, is to find groups like that on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or whichever social media strategy you, you decide or, or stream that you decide you're going to use, go into the groups and just, first of all, just look. See what kind of questions are being asked. See what problems are of people. Because while you're doing that, you're finding your avatar. You're finding the person that you can solve the problem for. Find the result. And then what we do is we become results orientated. So, and then again, Pete rightly mentioned, we start just commenting. We're not suddenly going, hey, come along to my meditation. Because people just go, ah, the BS barriers go up and you've lost them. However, if you can give some really good, calm, thoughtful responses to people and really just use it to help, you may then start and put a couple of posts on there for them. You know, which is just nice, talk about posts, maybe even talk about meditation, see the sort of response you got to get, asked questions. Who's feeling stressed at the moment? Who's struggling with isolation at the moment? and start building up relationships that way. But what it does, it starts to put you as an authority within that field. The next, I just wanna to briefly touch on social media posting. So when you talk about social media, there, um, there's lots of different avenues. So you've got LinkedIn, you've got uh, Instagram, you've got Facebook, you've got Pinterest. There's, there's a whole ream of these that you can do. Now, find where your audience is. That's the first thing. So, so if you're not dealing with businesses, LinkedIn's probably not the way to go. If you really want to deal with businesses, LinkedIn's the place to go, right? So you've got to look at where your audience is. And then the, um, the stats tell us that you should be posting at least 15 times a month. So that seems quite a lot, right?
But here's what you break it down to. That's really only three times a week. So if you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to do, well, three and a half times a week. I'm going to do three posts a week on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday. Or you can start to stagger your posts and do them all on a Monday and just have them drip out throughout the week or the month. And if you give, it, if you give half a day to it, once a month, you could have everything done, set up for the month. My suggestion is, like I said, the Facebook Live is a really good one. My only concern with Facebook Live is you want to get one shot, right? So you've got to know what you're going to say. And if you're not as comfortable at the beginning with that, my suggestion would be, you know, yes, walk along the beach. I'm just saying, I'm just feeling really good at the moment, blah, blah, blah. But at least you get to do it again, record yourself doing it, get the right version, and then upload that to your Facebook page. So Facebook Live's great. However, know your message first. If you feel you're going to mess up, maybe just record it. So this is what I would suggest as a recipe for what you do per week. I would have one message, so one short video message so people can connect with you. One short video message. Again, it doesn't have to be saving the world. It's just a connection. Hey guys, I'm just feeling really stressed at the moment and I thought to myself, hey, I shouldn't be stressed. You know, I, should, I, I know what to do, so I calmed myself down. And I, I meditated for a while, and I found that I found the answer to what I was looking for. Something like that. You're the experts, not me. The other could be something simple, like a, just a funny little meme or something that's got something to do with your field. I see ones on Skillful Mind, that's these funny little jokes and things like that about meditation. That's great. Use them. And then the other could just be maybe a blog or a longer post that you want to put on there. So it's just connecting with your audience. Some people want to watch, some people want to read, some people want to have a laugh. So if we can hit all them and at least they're seeing one post a week that, that, that appeals to them, then you're front of mind. And that's what it's about. It's, like I said before in, in the previous sessions, it's about staying front of mind with all the people in your tribe and in the wider community. So they know who you are, where you are, and how they can access you. It might be that people stay just listening to what you do for six months until they make a decision. So if that's gonna be six months, at least you're keeping them warm up until that point. The biggest issue that most people have with this is they start, and like anything, when you start exercising and you, you've got all this energy and you go, yeah, fantastic, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna exercise five times a week, and then a month later, ah, oh, feeling a bit tired today. You know, that's why the gyms are full in January, right? What happens in February? They're a bit quieter. You go to a gym in March, well, at the moment you will, but you go to a gym in March generally, and it's dead. Make the commitment that you're gonna do this. 15 a month, three a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or when your audience are there. So make the commitment to that's what you're going to do and stick to it. Because these aren't short-term gains, but it's short-term things that will create a long-term result. And that's what I want you to think about, is what's, what's gonna happen in six months, not what I'm gonna get from this, in two weeks right same one when you go into somebody's uh some in some group you're not going to get immediate response you know again you want to, you feel like you want to push i want to push i want to sell i want to sell i want to get people to come along but actually giving and i've said before you give in public and you sell in private that makes sense i hope so okay so really the the, the message from me today is what's your message? What's your story? And how are you gonna communicate your story to your group and to the outside world, to your reach? So what are you gonna do? Now, think about this, because that's gonna, it's gonna really help you, and we're here to support you as well with this. As you know, there's, a one, there's some one-on-one -on -one going on, Whatever you decide 
after this, you're gonna, you know, get the opportunity to spend some time with Mana or get some, spend some time with me or Peter. And really, I want you to think about what you want to get from that. You know, what's the biggest challenge you have right now? So this is it. It's what now? And I love this quote from Rumi. It says, why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? So what does that mean? It means you've now been given everything you need to make a success out of this. You've been given all the tools, you've been given all the support, but here's the thing. Have you ever bought an online course or done something like that and never got around to doing it? Bought a book and never read it? Anybody done that? I certainly have. Certainly books, you know, and I think, yep, yeah, that's going to be great. And I never get around to reading it. So are you going to be the 5% that can be successful at taking something on and running with it until it's successful? Or are you going to be part of the 95% that go, hey, that was great. But, and, uh, but all it's been is, uh, forgive me for this, but I'm going to say, all it's been is mental masturbation. You know, all it's been is that. So what I want you to do is take action now. This is your time to say, am I going to make a difference or not? Is this course making a difference in what I do or is it not? Am I going to sit here on Netflix and wait for it to all blow over? Or am I going to pivot and scale my business? Do something that I may feel uncomfortable about, but eventually it's going to make a difference me you're all here you've done four sessions that says to me you're in the right space you're in the purple patch you can now push forward and make something happen it's your time to decide what that means for you take the support that's there for you does that make sense you know it's not often that you have such support network around you. I always, I'm always reminded when, when Pete talks about, um, he talks about, you know, better together, you know, when you've got a bigger clout. And uh, I don't know if you ever, ever remember the film, uh, the Disney film, A Bug's Life. Has anybody seen that? And what happened in that, there was some, there was some um, I think there were, were the cockroaches or were they, I don't know. Um, there was something that, that was attacking the, the ants. And what they said was, we've got to keep the ants in line. Because if we can keep them separate, they're weak. But if they know that together they're strong, we don't stand a chance. Our, our way of life is over. So make the most of the community that you've got. Most people in business, in solopreneurs, are on their own. You have a community. Cherish it and use it. That makes sense. I hope it does. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions now, and I want you to answer them in the chat in the chat box below. I'm going to put them up on the screen, and I want you to answer these questions for me, please. Every single one of you. I want to know because once you write these things down, it becomes part of your mental memory of what you've got out of these sessions. So what have you enjoyed most about these workshops? Somehow I've lost my chat box, I can't open it up. There we go. So if you can just answer that for me, it'd be great. New information and the feeling of support. That's fantastic, Patricia. Practical knowledge and inspiration. So, loving it. The collaboration. This is great. I've seen some really good things coming through. Reintroducing what I already knew. Amazing. You know, how often do we go, oh, damn, I used to do that. So I'm glad if it's just reinforcing what you know. Okay. Learning about the tech. Yeah. And knowing that there is support. Wow. 
connection with like-minded people, inspiration, and lots of great info that I can go back to. Absolutely loving it. All right, keep them coming in while we ask the next question. All right. I want to put down what three benefits have you personally gained from these workshops? Now, I know you've said what you've enjoyed the most, so that was more of an emotional thing, but what benefits have you personally gained? What are you gonna take away and use? Being a counsel to everybody, I'm here, technical. Seeing, meeting other leaders, amazing. Teresa, you, 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 you've just said everything for me there. The confidence that I can do this. Thank you. And the courage to go out and do it. Motivation, feeling not being alone. More confidence in the tech. Fantastic. I finally got started. I know a little bit more today than I did yesterday. Great. I will master Zoom. <laughs> I will gain the confidence. You know what? It's doing it. It really is. It's just doing it. And I don't know if you know that if you open up Zoom, you can just start a meeting by yourself and play around with it while it's on without even inviting anybody else. More confidence in tech is one for me. So fabulous. Confidence and clarity. Lighting for the video. Love it. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna ask you another question. Again, some of these might sound a bit, a bit familiar, but what, this, what I'm trying to do is get you to reinforce what you're going to take away and do. So what specifically will you implement from this training? What's the, what's the thing that you're gonna go, this has to be done. There's no ifs, no buts, I'm gonna specifically do this, specifically. Zoom, plan my social media marketing and work on my message. Absolutely great. If some of you, if some of you that, that are looking at your media sort of marketing, I do have this thing called a um, content market sort of, uh, it gives you, well, it gives you ideas about what you can talk about and how you can talk about it in different ways. Yes, connect with your class. Absolutely. Don't let that, don't let that die. Because that's your, that's your lifeblood. Record online material. Wow, brilliant. My full potential online. Get it all out there. I'm loving these. This, this tells me that you're ready to go. Connect, connect, connect. All right. And have I got one there? Okay. And this is just for us. So we know how good this has been for you and what we, can, what we need to do next time. So on a scale of one to 10, how much did you enjoy these workshops? Now think of it as one, it's been a complete waste of my time and 10 being, I've loved it. Oh, bless you all, thank you. That's, that's so nice. <laughs> that's really good. 10, love the fear. 10, I've really enjoyed it. Wow. That's very kind of you. You know, we're here to support and, and I've really enjoyed running these for you and I'm sure Manna and Peter has been the same as well. That's great. All right. So the next thing then, keep them coming in. This is what is next. So let me get that out of the way, oops. So you've got to create a one minute video. Don't have to be quite one minute. Don't matter if it's one minute, 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Don't matter if it's 20 seconds long, but get out there and create it. We're not looking for perfection. Remember what we're looking for. Exactly. So, um, so get that one done. And please get it. Now, how, what are we doing with this, Pete? Are we, getting, are we sending them to Sarah? Uh, yep, just send them to Sarah, correct, or, you know, or to myself. Um, and what I also plan to do, um, as you know, I, I 
I am generally doing Facebook advertising and a little bit of advertising elsewhere is, you know, I'm thinking I was talking with Manna, it would be a great idea to highlight the various leaders. So once you've got a little one minute video, not only will we post that on our websites, we may even push it out through paid marketing, um, you know, saying something like, I am a skillful mind leader, and I, um, I've forgotten what you said, Andy, earlier on, and I specialize in this, and my, my classes will be such and such. And we can actually do some sort of paid advertising on the behalf of the people online to drive even more people to that online uh, calendar page. That, that was my thoughts. Great, absolutely. And, and as far as I'm concerned, for me, it should be a first, a first come first uh, basis. The people who get it in first are the first that get advertised. So that's, that's a bit of a incentive for you all to get that done. So and upload. Sorry, Andy, sorry. I'm just, just on that one minute video, I just wanted to ensure that please, please address the pain you're addressing through your classes. Ensure that is there on your video when you're sending your videos. What is the problem you're solving for people? Right. So we also want to upload three months of dates onto the Skillful Mind calendar. Get it done. It's not hard. Get it done. Okay, I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sarah, can you put them on for me for the next three months? That's what you're going to do. Come on, take action. Let's get it done. Engage in the supporting community that you've got. And like I say, cherish it. Use it. Utilize other people's knowledge and help other people with this. And when you've done that, when you've created your video, when you've uploaded the, the, uh, the dates, arrange the one-on-one -on -one strategy session. Now, that can either be, like I say, with Peter, it can either be with Mana, and it can be with myself. And I'm actually just gonna, I've seen um, somebody's name on here who's been through a strategy session with me just recently. Sue, can you unmute yourself, please? You still there, Sue? I don't think she's gone. I think she's gone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? I can't, we can't hear you, Sue. I think you, you recently went through one with me. Is that, yes, that's right, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it was kind of. Can I say, was it, was it worth doing? Definitely, definitely. Absolutely. Can't wait to work with you further. Mm. It, it's, a, it's, it's just a good way to go, okay, where am I going? Where am I going? And where, well, what's the end result? What do I want that to be? And how am I going to get there? What's the steps that we're going to put in place? Mm -hmm. And again, just being able to um, talk, just being able to talk and, and a good coach will pick out the bits that, that he thinks is relevant and maybe push and say, okay, what about this? And challenge you on something else. And I think we've started that process, haven't we, Sue? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, yeah, thanks for that, Sue. So get that done. Because these are worth a lot of money. So make the most of it so it's not coming out of your own pocket. Okay? So create your one, your one minute video. Upload three months dates. I want to see that calendar full. Support the community and arrange the session. And we want you to do that, or certainly the video and the date, by Monday the 6th of April. It's about taking action now. That's two days. And hopefully you're fired up, ready to go. Let's make it happen. Let's make sure that, you know, I've got two days. I can do five, six different takes of it. Send one. Doesn't have to be the one you use when it comes to the video. If you want, I'm happy to have a look at it and, and give you feedback. If not, but um, if you're happy with it, we can use it and make it, make it work. All right. So that's kind of me done for today. Again, I can't thank you enough for sticking with me and Mana and Peter for the, and Sarah for these four sessions. Um, I don't know if Pete just wants to close off uh, the session. Happy to stay around again afterwards and answer some questions that you've got. But guys, this is it, take action. The future is, is decided by you. You can create it. All right, guys, that's me signing off, thank you. Thanks very much, Andy. That was amazing. Like that was so many gold nuggets right there. So definitely go back, have a look at these slides. It, it's all in there. Um, I just had a couple of notes as we were going through that. Um, 
some of you might be thinking, you know, what am I going to post out there? What am I going to say on our, our Facebook Live? Of course, look at what we're doing with Skillful Mind. And by the way, you're welcome to take any of that. So you can repurpose and repackage any of that to send out to your uh, on your Facebook page or to your tribe. And if you come up with something original, please post it on our page as well or send it to us uh, for us to post. Also, one of the best things you can do to help people is, as you can see, give them free, really good free content. And you'll see on my site, I've got a free ebook, a free audio learn to meditate course and a free 21 day meditation channel challenge. Uh, which are really popular and again you are welcome to actually take those freebies and sort of give them away um, to anyone you feel if you connect with someone in your social uh, media if you don't have your own stuff otherwise feel free to take that and make something similar okay there's there's nothing to um, uh, you know my stuff or anything um, also, I just want to mention a couple of things. If you love this and I saw lots of 10 out of 10s, so that's great. And you want to go more in depth. I hope a man, Mandy doesn't uh, mind me saying, but he's got a, another sales uh, program like this on Wednesday called marketing or ethical sales, ethical sales and marketing. And as I said, right at the beginning on uh, day one, the reason I love Andy is not only does he make stuff crystal clear through his coaching and his presentations, but he, he is an advocate of ethical sales. It can be done. In fact, it should be done because the best sales for the long term is to do it ethically because it's your reputation that will eventually be the magnet. So contact us if you want to have an invite into uh, that particular um webinar which is going ahead on wednesday but uh, this wednesday like four days time now some people also sorry it's yep. free as well sorry free for skill for my leaders. Free as well. thank you thank you andy that's awesome you're very generous there um so that is free so definitely take advantage of that and you've seen what quality andy gives out so the ethical sales uh for wednesday um and also, uh, likewise, Andy is um, sort of obviously into ethical sales for meditation leaders, but also other businesses. So he will be running a uh, course like this again in the near future uh, with the similar four uh, stages. So if you do want to uh, have a look at this again from a different angle, um, and you've looked at it in the resources angle, I can also, or you, or you can connect directly with Andy and find out when he may be doing something the same as this or, or like, like this again, which I know he will be doing it in the next couple of weeks. So, so stay in touch. And finally, I do monthly calls. My next one is on, uh, on Monday, but given that we've put so much effort into this, I'm not going to be doing a monthly call this month. I will just do the induction for the people who've just signed up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so we'll, we'll skip this month's uh, induction, but because this has been so popular, what the good news is, is I'll endeavor to get more um, topical presenters onto this forum to give you a look at uh, different topics from other people's point of view, because I think you'll all agree this has been very successful and that's in due to you guys showing up. Um, but also I'd like to maybe propagate this and have some other people talk about meditation or about marketing meditation from different viewpoints as we go forward. So that will be sort of starting in May uh, sort of time. So with that said, um, thank you very much. Uh, um, are there any questions? Yep, some people asking for leaders calls. Good, send in your videos first and we'll create those calls. Um, I can't see any questions. So what I'll do is I'll sign off there. I will stop the recording, but you're welcome to hang back and uh, have a little chat, catch up with us or catch up with each other um, for another five or 10 minutes as we um, finish up the call. Okay, signing off.